Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how to create stylized, hand-painted, and sort of tune shaded trees in Blender. This is a promotion slash breakdown of my final product for the Blender Creative Package series on Patreon, a pack of five of such stylized trees. It's a paid product with the same price tag as all of the other packages in the series, so if you're interested to check it out, I'll have the links to it down below. But don't feel obligated to buy any of these products. I'll be sharing all of the information I can in this video so that you can recreate these trees yourself. So Assured. I'll also be announcing some important updates at the end of this video as well, so keep watching and I hope you learned something new today. If you've bought the package already, the project should look something like this. I have one of the trees nicely displayed on the left viewport here with the node setup of the leaves right here. We're going to talk about all of that stuff later, but for now, let's just take a look at the scene collection. Right here, we have all of these collections. The first one is tree bases with all the base meshes of the trunks and their modifiers intact. The second one is a big one called tree final meshes with five sub collections containing the final tree models. Each of these sub collections have two more collections called tree meshes with the final meshes for the leaves and trunk and tree setup which contains the original setup that I used to make the leaves such as the particle emitter and the custom normals. I took some of these ideas from a certain tutorial made by a certain someone so stick around till the later part of the video where we'll get into the notes where I'll be going over that. Anyway finally we have the miscellaneous collection with the lighting setup for each tree that I use for the showcase images. So basically it contains everything that I use to create the renders so that you can see exactly how I created that stylized look. Now let's check out how exactly I made these trees. The first four trees are very similar to each other with their hand painted trunks and random looking leaves. In the last one however, the leaves have a lot more of a defined shape to them. If we check out the base meshes included in the project, you can see that I simply used some vertices to get the basic shape of the tree and then used the skin modifier to turn it into a nice model. I used a subserve before the skin modifier to smooth out the vertices and one after it to smooth out the mesh and make it curved instead of this boxy shape. If you haven't used the skin modifier before, the way you use it is very simple. Let's create a cube and merge everything to the center so that we have a single vertex. Now you can either make the shape first or add the skin modifier first. The latter is what I prefer to do. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Next you can extrude this base vertex up and then you'll notice that this dotted circle moves along with it. This represents the root vertex off of which the skin modifier will be based. So it would be a good idea to make it at the bottom. So what I like to do is select the bottom vertex and hit mark root right here. Now you can keep extruding this vertex and make branches and stuff. To change the size of the solidification at any time, you need to press Ctrl A instead of the usual S to scale it in. So this proves to be a great method to create the trunk and the branches of the trees. Once you're happy with the base mesh, you can apply the first subdivision and skin modifier. Then we can do some manual cleanup. Let's delete the ends of each branch and the bottom of the trunk. Next, we can also reduce the number of edge loops in the branches where it is unnecessary by selecting two or three edges in the pattern that you want and then press Ctrl Shift plus to increase the selection. Then you can go to select, select loops, edge loops and then press Ctrl X to dissolve them. This step isn't super important but just for the sake of keeping everything nice and tidy, I did it for the final product. Next I went directly ahead and unwrapped it. I first reduced the subsurf levels to 1 and then applied it so that we can access the curved loops going along the trunk. Since the original had two levels, I added another subsurf with one level back to match the original. Anyway with that out of the way, I added seams to the bottommost loop of almost all of the major branches so that I knew that they will be separate islands. After that, the process got a lot simpler as it meant that most of these were just cylinders at this point so they just needed another long cut across the surface so that they could be flattened. In some cases like these where I didn't have the circular cut, I just had a long cut going along it. You can imagine that this shape would open up something like so. If all of this is sounding too complicated, you can always rely on the smart UV project for some quick unwrapping but that does make things a little bit more chaotic, the seams are all over the place and there isn't a very unique pattern to the unwrapping which you can understand so it becomes hard harder to work with in case of hand painted textures. But if you're going to use a program like Substance Painter, it's going to try and hide most of the seams for you so it'll make your life a lot easier. Speaking of which, I also use Substance Painter for this project. That doesn't mean that you can't do it in Blender, it's just that I preferred the straightforward workflow which Substance had which I was already used to so I went with that. Now the way you're going to paint your tree really depends on you. For this particular tree, I went for a super stylized look with these magical looking patterns. 
patterns on it. For the others, I had more generic textures. So I'm not gonna go over exactly how to paint because I literally just made some basic fill layers with black masks and painted the white wherever I wanted that color. Moving on to the leaves, which is probably the more interesting part of this video. As I said, I took some ideas from a certain someone and they are Lightning Boy Studio and holy shit they're so good. They have the super popular video about making Ghibli trees in Blender and I got most of my inspiration of making the leaves from there. So if you want a step by step video with detailed explanation on how to recreate it, I definitely recommend that you check it out. As for me, I will give you a quick look at what I did too. Firstly to control how the leaf should appear on the tree and the overall shape it should require, I decided to make these weird looking blobs with fractal displacements which you can access right down here in this menu which pops up when you subdivide. So just by doing that and occasionally scaling and tweaking the vertices around with proportional editing, I got these shapes. Now since we want to have the leaves fill up this whole space, we're going to add a particle system first. We'll need to set it up in a way that it doesn't actually emit or project any particles since we're going to be doing that using a particle instance model modifier instead. This will make more sense later. For now, let's just set it to hair, advance, and set the number to 4000, hair length to 0, go to where it says source and then change the emit from to volume. Now let's go to the render settings down here and set the render as to object so that we can access the scale and scale randomness values but don't pick anything for the instance object. Now let's say that we want to use this weird little shape as a leaf. We can just add a particle instance modifier on this leaf object. Select the shape that we created earlier with the particle system on it and select the respective particle system that we want to refer to. We can also hit on the size button so that we can control the size of the particle instance using a particle system on the emitter. I'm feeling lazy to explain all the good stuff about why it's so useful so you can check out the lightning boy studio channel or my instagram page where I have a one minute tutorial using particle instances. After all that tedious setup there's more tedious setup. Right now each individual leaf has its own normals facing in random directions making them look like pebbles at the moment. We want to cheat and trick blender into using the normals of another object instead. So we're going to duplicate the original emitter object, delete the particle system and smooth it out a bit using a smooth modifier. Now we can add a data transfer modifier on the leaves, pick the custom normals object as the source, turn on face, corner data, custom normals and also make sure to turn on auto smooth normals from the object data properties. After that's done, you can see that we get this weird shading and that's when you're going to note that you were successful in transferring the normals so congrats, you did it. You can't see each of the individual little pebbles now but it's still there so we can do some super cool stuff with it. So let's take a look at the materials of the leaves now which is the cream of the crop when it comes to these ghibli looking leaves. It's basically just a diffuse shader connected to a shader to RGB node which does exactly what it says and that means that we can now manipulate the uh, output from the shader however we like and it'll still react to the lights in our scene because that's what a shader does. So we can have a color ramp define the whole spectra of colors that we want all the way from the low tones to the high tones. What else we can do is we can mask out the dark parts of the shader which are the shadows using another color ramp and mix anything we want in it. So I mixed in this noise texture here which I think looks pretty cool. For the trunk material I converted the principal shader to RGB as well then tweak the colors using an RGB curves node. I also did something similar to the leaves and mixed in the noise texture in the shadows here as well. The thing that puts it all together and really sells that stylized look in my opinion is the lighting. The good thing about stylized scenes is that you can go pretty crazy with it depending on the context and in terms of context we have no context. <laughs> so I went extremely crazy with the lighting and faked a lot of those awesome rim lights that you see here. For a quick breakdown I have a sunlight that's affecting the whole scene's overall lighting and then for the custom lighting on this tree. First up we have an area light coming from around the same angle as the sun. This is to fake some of the highlights on the leaves. Moving on we have a bunch of these small point lights to add the rim lights on the trunk. They have a custom distance as well so that they only affect a small area around them giving me a lot of control over the look. Moreover we also have two of these point lights with a negative value so that they can reduce some of the lighting from these leaves and emphasize the low tones of the leaves. And yeah all in all that's everything that we have going on in this project. It's mostly the same for each tree but with variations but the style is consistent all throughout. Now let me quickly make the announcement that I mentioned at the start of the video. If you didn't already know this package is a part of a monthly product series I had for my patreon page for the $3 tier but it's really no joke to come up with a viable idea for a product that could be used in a lot of cases if not universally in the customers projects and then also preparing it and then packaging it all under the deadline of a month. It really chips away the quality of the products and I mostly end up rushing at the end just to finish it on time. So 
I decided to finish it right here, with this as the last package. I'm thinking of revamping the tiers quite a bit in my Patreon page with hopefully a bit of less pressure on my side but still providing you with enough content worth paying for. If you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see or what you'd expect from me if you decided to support me on Patreon, feel free to comment down below this video. Anyway, that was basically it for today. I genuinely hope that you learned something from it or at least enjoyed watching it. If you did, then make sure to like this video. If you want to see more content like this in the future, then hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell because YouTube doesn't tell you this but the subscribe button is pretty damn worthless without the bell icon because you wouldn't get notified about my videos at all. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and join our Discord server for more frequent updates. Also, do check out my Gumroad page where I have all of these 7 Blender creative packages for sale. No obligations again, only buy them if you have the means to do so. With all of that said and done, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.